Welcome to the Blue Poppy video series. Um, on this video we're going to be discussing the quality discernment of red ginseng. So red ginseng is somewhat different from white ginseng in terms of its therapeutic action, also somewhat different in terms of its pharmacology. Red ginseng is made um, by taking the fresh ginseng root after harvest and steaming it. And the steaming process causes changes in the sugar of the ginseng, which causes the ginseng to change from a, a, a white color um, to the more characteristic red color. Red ginseng is, uh, generally speaking, a little bit more valuable uh, than white ginseng. A lot of the really premium roots are selected to be made into red ginseng to be sold on the high-end red ginseng market. Red ginseng is a little bit stronger than white ginseng in terms of its therapeutic action at supplementing chi, but white ginseng is superior for boosting fluids. White ginseng is thought to be more neutral to warm to slightly warm in nature, whereas red ginseng is generally described as warm. And Korean red ginseng is, is thought to be more warm uh, than the other ginsengs. Oftentimes Korean red ginseng is described as hot. Um, that's partially due to the differences in the processing method. Uh, in Korea, they often use relatively, um, within each, ha each, each uh, producer has sort of a house secret method of, of doing the processing for Korean ginseng. There's no single published harmonized standard. There's a lot of trade secrets and a lot of variation um, from one place to the next. But it's often reported that the, the fresh roots are first soaked briefly in a tincture of other medicinals in Korea. And then after being soaked in that tincture, they are steam processed um, to form red ginseng. And the inclusion of, of futsa, aconite, in, the, in that mother tincture that it's, that it's soaked in is thought to be part of the reason that Korean ginseng is regarded as more warming. Chinese ginseng is regarded as more moderate um, in comparison to Korean red ginseng. And Chinese red ginseng is thought, in comparison to Chinese white ginseng, to be stronger at supplementing qi and better for patients that tend towards cold, whereas white ginseng is better for patients that tend towards heat or tend towards dryness. Um, or for those patients, you could also use something like Xiangshen, which is more cooling and um, more enriching to the fluids in yin. So generally speaking, red ginseng is our ginseng of choice when we're looking for strong qi supplementation. And red ginseng ranges in quality from being very cheap and inferior to being very premium and really high end. Generally speaking, the threshold for red ginseng the ceiling is much higher for the premium product. Um, white ginseng, oftentimes, the uh, the price in China maxes out at around 100, 120, 150 uh, Chinese yuan per per kilo. Whereas red ginseng, it can go 500, 800, 1,000 renminbi per kilo. So the price of ginseng varies dramatically, um, depending on the age and the quality. Here we have a, a little spread that basically shows a, a linear progression of quality. This one is a different, different item. But essentially here we're starting off on the left with um, a very small, light, somewhat translucent, immature. And um, these roots, when they were fresh, they were a little bit soft and pliable. And um, if, we look <coughs> if we look here, these are all relatively mediocre ginseng roots. Um, these ones on the left, they've got, all of these roots actually have sort of a light, yellowish, somewhat um, translucent orange color. And if you look at the bottom, or if you slice it on a cross section, you find that there's basically no um, rings or, or obvious clear demarcations at the center of the root. It's pretty much a uniform, flat, um, orangish red color. Uh, these ones have had their, their little necks broken off. Here you can see the neck of the root. If you compare that to a more premium root, you can see the dramatic difference in terms of the neck development. Um, that neck development is associated with the age of the ginseng. You can also see that as you're going up in quality, you have a difference of appearance in the skin of the root, and you also have a difference of appearance in the size, the density, and the length of the root. So if we continue to move up in quality, we find both of these two are relatively mediocre and expensive roots. Um, <coughs> but as you can see, this one's starting to get a little fatter, a little bit larger, 
the price is increasing just a little bit. But both of these are sort of common prescription grade, relatively average to mediocre rate. As you start to get a little bit larger, you find that the neck development is much better. And this root <laughs> is still somewhat uh, reddish to the outside appearance. You find that as the ginseng gets higher in quality, um, that external uh, surface gets a little bit golden. Um, they call this huang ma gua in Chinese. But this, uh, this golden skin is seen as the ginseng gets more, more mature and of higher quality. That external skin gets a little bit of that golden appearance. It's not to be confused with um, sometimes inferior ginseng will also look a little bit yellowish. But the, the yellowish exterior that you see on the inferior ginseng is got a completely different tone to the, to the deeper, nicer, um, gold, more gold-colored skin that you see as the ginseng gets older. So if we continue to move up in quality, we find that um, these two roots, they're both getting to be relatively upper mid-grade, relatively high-quality ginseng. Um, both of them have good neck development. They have slight differences in their neck. This one has a slightly more squat neck. This one has a slightly more extended neck. And sometimes the strain of ginseng that's used will have variations in that. <coughs> um, but if, if you were to look, it's difficult to see um, in these specimens. But if you look at the bottom of the roots, oftentimes you can see that there's a little bit of a, a, little bit of a ring formation that's coming out at the bottom of the root. It can be difficult to see when you're looking at the whole roots. But when looking at the whole roots, you should always stop and look at the bottom and see if you've got that good ring development happening. Um, if you can't see it very clearly, the only, really way, the only really good way to do it is to slice it and look at that cross section. Generally speaking, the cross section of sliced ginseng will have relatively clear, relatively distinct uh, ring-like marking. And the more clear and the more distinctive that marking is, generally, the better the quality. So here the root, uh, the root size is it's increasing in quality. The, the skin is getting a little bit more golden. The root is getting more straight, not quite so branched out. A little bit more straight, a little bit more consistent. And if one looks closely, you can find that there's uh, straight, uh, dense striations that can be seen on the body of the root. Generally speaking, the, the more abundant and the more dense those striations are, the better. And the, the flavor of ginseng, of course, is actually the most important gauge. So taking the root and actually boiling the root and, and drinking the tea is the most accurate gauge of quality because red ginseng will have a very beautiful, very distinctive flavor. And if that flavor is a little bit muddled or a little bit less clean and pure tasting, the root is generally a little bit lower quality. As the quality goes up, that flavor gets progressively more clean, more clear, more beautiful, more strong. So ultimately, flavor is still the most important, the still the most important gauge. But you can see visually um, some of the differences as the roots go up in price and quality. They tend to get a little bit more golden, a little bit more straight, and a little bit more long. These two roots are both relatively high quality, um, but this one on the left is, is somewhat uh, less expensive because it's uh, got a lot more imperfections in the body of the root. It's also not quite as straight, not quite as long. When the roots are very straight, very long, very firm, very dense and heavy, that's associated with quality. And they're typically um, uh, sold based on the number of roots per gene. The number of roots either per 600 grams or the number of roots per 500 grams. The lower the number, the larger the root. So generally speaking, once the roots are an average size of over 50 grams or so, that it's getting into pretty, pretty high quality. Um, this particular one, it's got what they call a, a butterfly neck, um, which is one of the things that's used to differentiate in the advanced levels that I'm talking about. All the really premium ginsengs from different regions. This, is, this formation is called butterfly neck. So um, that concludes our brief little YouTube video on red ginseng. And we'll follow it up with other ginseng, other ginsengs, and other herbs. So come back and visit us.